The commander of the southwestern front of the Imperial Russian Army, General Alexei Brusilov, launched a colossal assault against the Austro-Hungarians in Galicia on June 4, 1916. The offensive was one of the first to utilize revolutionary shock troops and infiltration tactics on a mass scale, attacking weak points of the Austro-Hungarian defenses to achieve breakthrough. The German army, among others, would copy the Russian infiltration tactics for later attacks. The Brusilov Offensive is known as one of the deadliest in world history and is the only World War I campaign to be named after an individual commander. It broke the back of the Austro-Hungarian army and had pushed it back to the Carpathian Mountains by September 1916. But due to poor coordination with other Russian commanders, the offensive failed to fully knock the Austro-Hungarians out of the war. Despite the massive tactical success, it cost the Russian Empire a million casualties and failed to bring about a conclusive victory against the Central Powers, which left the Russian population disillusioned and susceptible to revolution. Tsar Nicholas II abdicated after the 1917 February Revolution, and the following provisional Kerensky government was overthrown by Lenin and his Bolsheviks in November. Russia was thrown into an enormously bloody and costly civil war between mainly the Bolshevik Red Army and the opposing White Army and its multinational allies. One of the key battles between the Reds and the Whites was the struggle for control of the city of Tsaritsyn on the Volga River between 1918 and 1920. Tsaritsyn changed hands several times during the civil war and was temporarily occupied by the White Army in June 1919 when Major Ewan Cameron Bruce of the British Army spearheaded the capture of the city with a single Mark V tank. In January 1920, Stalin led a successful Red Army recapture of the city, forcing the remnants of the Whites to retreat towards the Crimean Peninsula. In 1925, Tsaritsyn was renamed Stalingrad, and during World War II, it would once again be under siege in one of the bloodiest battles in history. The defeat of Russia in the east allowed Germany to concentrate its forces for one massive assault on the British sectors. The initial hurricane bombardment was heard as far away as London. General Ludendorff then ordered his stormtroopers to attack the enemy trench lines. Let them think they're winning. Jerry don't know us, Brits. You put our backs to the wall, we'll fight tooth and nail to the death. This city, I mean, it isn't far from the old Somme battlefield. A field where every yard is soaked in British blood. The men don't forget that. It's do or die this time. Everybody knows it. The French, the Canadians. Australians, New Zealanders. The Indian troops, all of our allies. But for now, we stand alone with our backs to the walls against Jerry's elite.
We need to defend the city of Amiel at all costs. Hold on to Point Labyrinth in the ruins over here. If we lose this position, we must fall back to this bridge, Pont Neuf, and keep it secure. Should we fail to stop the advance here, we shall make our last stand at Place Longville. More British blood will be spilt, but we will be triumphant. Fifty attackers remain. Objective button. Twenty attackers remain. The enemy has reached the final objective. Fifty attackers remain.
lost objective apples. rises above the rooftops as the sun sets on Europe as we know it. We must now negotiate peace, but they hold all the cards. Britannia's voice is silent. With Germany now controlling the vital railway hub of Amiens, the Allied armies in France would have been divided. And if Paris were to fall, the surrender of France would likely follow. In this situation, Britain would have no choice but to seek a truce while they planned their new strategy. This speculative situation would surely impact the outcome of the war. Tomorrow we'll be going over the top, finally up against the Hun. So far it's felt too much like a holiday. You seen the machine guns they got? The artillery? The planes? Damn it, odds of us getting through this campaign gotta be about 25 to 1 against. Them devils ain't so tough. Us boys will knock out their fortifications easy. Break this Hindenburg line and finish this war. French been fighting for four years. They say just four minutes up against these fortified German lines and we look just like them. Yeah like an army of living dead. General Pershing has ordered an attack along the Meuse River. First, we must secure Shrapnel Corner, this fortified trench line here. Then, we will move into their rear, take and hold this chateau. Following this assault, we will continue our push towards this railway hub and capture it quickly. This will clear the way into the Argonne Forest. Objective butter. 
Overrun them! And take the objective! We are losing objective butter. <coughs> we have taken objective apples. We have lost objective butter. Losing objective apples. Ah! <sighs> 